real quick, if you hear barking in this video, um, the wiener dogs downstairs have decided that now's the time to scream and they never bark at anything. So it's almost like the universe always knows what I'm trying to film. Hi guys, my name is Lacey of Speakless and Fat Hips and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I don't know what this like leaning back thing is. I don't know what to do with my body during my intro. I just don't know. I'm sorry. We are doing an anti-haul today. I don't like to do these very often because like I mentioned before, somebody always gets upset even though this is literally just makeup. It's not that serious. And honestly, I feel like anti-hauls are just so needed. They're so needed. We need to talk shit about makeup. We need to counteract the constant barrage of buy my shit use my code, new releases, oh my god, Sephora sales, gotta have it, love it, blah. We gotta combat it. If you don't know what an anti-haul is, and I don't know how you couldn't at this point because it is like part of our makeup community and culture and lexicon. In a traditional haul, we show off what we've bought and why we purchased it. In an anti-haul, it is the opposite of that, the antithesis of that, if you will. We are talking about what we're not gonna buy and why. And the goal of an anti-haul is to not only talk ourselves out of buying some bullshit and spending less money and acquiring less crap, but to hopefully talk some of you guys out of these things as well, which is awesome. I am going to give a disclaimer though. And if you're the kind of person that's like, we should all be adults here, you don't need a disclaimer. I implore you to start your own YouTube channel and sit in front of a camera and give your opinion on makeup you don't like because then you will truly understand when people get so super passionate about this crap why a disclaimer might be necessary. So if you're that person, you hate a disclaimer, like jump to this time that I'm putting right here. That's when it all starts. Bear with me though, I wanna give a disclaimer. Anti-hauls, like I said, are meant to be hyperbolic and a little bit satirical to kind of like match the energy that is typically given to us in normal beauty content. That whole like you gotta have this, my favorite life changing, you need this, use my code, kind of constant consumerism that we always have. These brands do not need you defending them. They care about your money. They don't care about you getting in my comments and screaming at me that you actually love X palette by X brand and I'm a dumbass for not thinking so and blah blah blah. The companies have won at that point if you find the need to act like that in not only my comment section but anywhere on the internet. I can promise you that these brands don't care about you. They don't care about representation, diversity, create they don't, probably don't even care about creating great, wonderful, like need fulfilling products, honestly. They literally just care about like squeezing as much money out of us as humanly possible, especially with how profitable the beauty community has gotten in recent years. So like, seriously, if I'm trashing a major sold in Sephora and Ulta brand that you love, like me doing that is not gonna hurt them in any way. I promise you. If you know that these kind of videos upset you, don't watch them. I'm anti-hauling makeup, stuff, objects, things that are probably gonna sit in a landfill one day. I'm not anti-hauling you as a person. If you love this stuff, that's okay. Everything works differently for different people. We all have different tastes. We're all unique in what we want and what kind of makeup we wear. That's okay. Just because I'm talking shit on a product that I don't wanna spend money on, that I don't wanna bring into my collection, doesn't mean that you should feel bad if you did spend money on it or you truly love it or you did bring it into your collection. That's all fine. These videos are supposed to help keep us in check and help us save a little money and just be fun at the end of the day. It's okay to shit top makeup. It doesn't have feelings, it's just stuff. It washes off at the end of the day. It's colorful goo we all put in our faces. We're all gonna be okay, just breathe. Okay, now that that's out of my system, I have so much stuff to talk about. I am going to be referencing trend mood for most of this as well as the notes that I've written on every item so I can hit all of my points. Also, my friend Emily, shout out to Emily, Emily Hanhan, who you should go check out her channel. She's in my neighborhood right now, so I had to like really hurry this up so I could see her today. All right, I'm gonna scoot over to the side. Oh, I'm blocking the pumpkin, whatever. I'm gonna put makeup right here. We're gonna talk some shit on it. Here we go. The Lime Crime 
Vivid Venus palette. Number one, I am very confused because I thought Lime Crime already came out with a rainbow palette, which I will put directly underneath. What the fuck? So because of the other palette I just, I just referenced, I don't feel like anyone who actually likes Lime Crime, myself included, I know they're a controversial brand. I tend to like them. That's a whole other story. I don't think Lime Crime fans asked for this. I feel like, I don't know if I'm speaking for everybody, I feel like we all wanted a Venus 2XL, not a Venus XL2, but that's just me. Now that Lime Crime has switched over ownership and Dodier has kind of stepped way out of the picture and they're in Ulta and they're becoming a bit more of like a mainstream brand, their products feel it. Like their products feel pedestrian. They don't feel like the same kind of grungy, kind of cool, like smoking in the bathroom in high school like wears Doc Martin boots and like will punch you in the face kind of vibe that they used to have. I'm also confused by the choosing of the colors to be in this palette because it looks like a mix of matte and shimmers but there's like a metallic purple but no matte purple and two yellows and I just like I personally absolutely hate when rainbow palettes do that when they don't make sense in terms of like what's a matte and what's a shimmer. I also just haven't been impressed with Lime Crime's quality lately. I really haven't. I think since they've become more mainstream and pushed into Ulta and changed over ownership that their quality's also gone down. I can't prove it but I bought the Venus 3 and I bought the two XL palettes and I just did not like them as much as I like the Venus 1 and 2. Those to me are some of my favorite palettes in my collection. I think Venus 2 especially is like incredibly groundbreaking but I just haven't liked them enough lately to spend high-end prices on their shit. It all kind of ends up going on sale anyway. And just in general, I feel like rainbows are overdone and they're the new neutral palette. I'm very over it. Every single company was like, oh my God, we have to have a rainbow palette to appease these people. And unless they're of exceptional quality or value, I just don't find any of them to be worth it, quite honestly. And I think especially if you're in the market for a rainbow palette, it doesn't make sense to go for Lime Crime right now because they kind of exist in the same weight class as a lot of other brands now with for all the reasons I've mentioned. So I think you can get better value and better quality elsewhere. Probably from a brand with a less shitty reputation. Pass for me. I probably would have bought this two years ago, I'm not gonna lie. The Besties palette from JC Cosmetics. I'm not sure who the brand is, but this palette infuriated me so much that I needed to talk about it. The color scheme almost reminds me of the Glam Light Burger palette in that like the mix of the greens and the oranges. But I feel like this is just too much for the sake of being too much. The colors to me are extremely unorganized and extremely uninspiring and it does not make sense the layout of this palette. The amount of shadows that you get in the layout does not make any ounce of sense to me. Like the way that the colors are arranged there's like an orange and a row of a purple and a green and a row of the orange you know what I mean? Like it doesn't even make sense in like a gradient so that you could you know, need all of these colors to kind of build beautiful smoky eye looks. Like it's all just mismatched and like weird for the sake of being weird. This palette to me seems like quirky for the sake of being quirky. Like normal people scare me hot topic t-shirt trying too hard. Like, I don't know. And I'm sure that was probably a very strategic marketing tactic to be like, if we're so crazy and ridiculous and we look like nerds candy vomit then people will instagram us and i'm just like so over it like as much as i love color this is confusing and, and i wouldn't know what to do with it if i had it in my hands and it's just large and i feel like this is probably really intimidating for people who want to get into colorful eyeshadow because it's way too much too fast and like it, it's not good speaking of glam light though because i mentioned their burger palette the glam light paint palette and it looks like an artist's palette you would put paints on I hate this and I got tagged in this a lot and I'm not someone who hated the burger palette. I actually own the burger, the pizza, and the taco palette. So if you guys want me to review those, I'll review all three of those. I also like, I really like Glam Light's quality, but I hate this palette. <laughs> it's just a gimmick. Like it really, there's no other way to put it. This is a fucking gimmick. They're like, every company has a rainbow palette right now. So how do we set ours apart? We make it look like an artist palette, which I get what they were going for, but it kind of almost seems like a James Charles palette ripoff. Not to like defend James Charles in any way, shape or form on this channel, but how he did the Unleash Your Inner Artist, it almost seems like a nod to that palette. So if you like wanted the James Charles palette, but you hate Morphe or not about James or any of that crap, 
this could maybe work for you but this is a huge palette and it has a lot of wasted space and it has one of those toilet seat lids that has like a very small connecting piece so if you're like me and you're a monster with your makeup you'd probably end up like ripping the cover off very easily i think if you're looking for a good rainbow palette to add to your collection it makes sense to go with a more smaller concise one that you can kind of grab and pair with your other palettes if you're not like used to using colors like that or I don't know, like if you're using a palette and you're like, I really need a red right now. Like if to pull out your gigantic toilet seat artist palette, palette, it doesn't make sense. It like looks cute if you're going to display it. But if you're buying makeup for the sake of displaying it, literally don't. Just don't. Gimmick. I'm going to say that word one more time. It's a gimmick. This upsets me. <laughs> this upsets me because I don't stand a lot of things. I say that I stand Teresa's dead and that's about it. Back in the day, I used to stand sugar pill so hard and I just have fallen so out of love with them. So the sugar pill Endless Summer Collection. The matte eyeshadows in itself, which is what I would be the most excited about and what I originally was the most excited about back when I talked about these eyeshadows when I collabed with Hannah Smokey Glow Hannah like last year and they teased this release. And then they like postponed it months and months and had some kind of delay in manufacturing. To me, it seems like Sugar Pill always has some kind of delay, which I, I'm sure is out of their hands in a lot of cases, but they're also in Ulta now. So I kind of hold them to a little bit of a higher level. I don't know what my hand's doing, but you know what I mean? Like you hold brands and big stores to like a little bit of a higher level than if they were just an indie brand, you know, because they should have the money and resources to get their shit together. And I just feel like, the place that Sugar Pill once held, they no longer hold for me and just in makeup history in general. Like their colorful matte shadows are amazing and expensive and hard to get and ridiculous. And I think there was a time where they were kind of the only matte shadows doing what they were doing. But now a lot of brands have a lot of rainbow palettes. It's kind of the point of this anti-haul. And there are a lot of beautiful formulas out there that are going to give you beautiful, spectacular colors. And Sugar Pill, like, doesn't release things fast enough anyway or doesn't have things in stock long enough or fast enough or when you have the money to get them that's what happened with me when I bought my original pro palette which is like a hundred and twenty dollar palette um it was either like when I had the money the shadows I wanted wouldn't be in stock or vice versa the stars literally had to align for me to get that palette I just don't get what sugar pills doing I feel like they're so behind on trends they're not innovative anymore and they don't really have an excuse to be as backlogged as they are you know what i mean so i would have bought the matte shadows a year ago i don't think i'm gonna buy them now just because i have other palettes that are doing the same thing for me there's also like some loose glitters and some like sparkly lips which again just doesn't feel interesting or excited enough it feels almost muted in like today's makeup community like you have to really scream and be ridiculous to be seen in the makeup world because there's just so much stuff being released at any given moment and sugar pill just like doesn't stand up enough they don't speak up loud enough they don't do enough releases they don't do enough trendy releases it's just all kind of like boring next forgettable i also have to talk about the fun size palette that's coming out because i will say this part isn't a true anti-haul this is a like I'm going to put it on hold for a minute. I think Lacey of the past, maybe Lacey a year or two ago, would have bought this the day it's released, no questions. Now, because I've tried some Sugar Pill palettes, not the Pro palettes you make yourself, but they're pre-made arranged palettes, I have hated the quality of the two Sugar Pill palettes I've tried. I have the Little Twin Star one and the Trixie Mattel one. I like Little Twin Stars as a face palette, and then Trixie Mattel was only okay. I don't think what they put in palettes is the same as their Pro pans. So for me, I'm going to hold out on reviews for this palette and I suggest that you do as well. But I'm interested, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's I believe it's coming to Ulta and I have a shit ton of Ulta points. So if it does come to Ulta and I do see positive reviews, I might use my points for it. But other than that, I'm not jumping on it. I'm not like, oh my god, yes, give it to me. Because <laughs> I just like, I know what Sugar Pill palette quality has been and I'm not excited about it. So what a shame. The Pure Cosmetics barbie collection i'm saying barbie in quotations because i don't see what is barbie about this collection personally it's really sparkly beautiful packaging i will say the first time i looked at it i thought it was jacqueline hill lipsticks take that for what you will upon closer inspection 
The lipsticks are in beautiful packaging and the palette is in extremely beautiful packaging and it's pink and it's sparkly. I don't see Barbie in that. I see pink sparkly. I think this easily could have been a holiday collection. I will say, beautiful packaging, don't fall into the trap of buying packaging because it's beautiful because it doesn't mean anything if you're not going to use it anyway because at that point it becomes a knickknack and it just takes up space. So the collection is like some lipsticks and some colors we all already have. An eyeshadow palette with like a pop of pink and a pop of blue on it that again we all fucking have. Not exciting to me at all. Some gimmicky pink skincare mask thing that is literally probably meant for you to take Instagram photos in so you can tag Pure Cosmetics. It's not going to give your skin fucking anything. I don't trust gimmicky skincare. Pink and then sparkly and you rip it off. It's like Too Faced Glow Job. Fucking hate that shit. And like I said, this is not Barbie to me. This does not tug on my nostalgic heartstrings. There's like a pink. Like to me, Barbie should be amped up like a thousand notches. Like very similar to my eye look today. I feel like I have like a very, a very Barbie look going on today, but it should be like pink plastic convertible. Malibu Barbie house. Plastic Ken doll in a plastic beach chair. Pink dog. Pink beach ball. Pink, 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 pink. pink. This to me is like if Barbie grew up, if Barbie was my, I hate all that crap. Like if you're gonna go the nostalgic route, go all the way. But also, it is an anti-haul. Don't buy shit just because it's nostalgic. Like if you're like a diehard Barbie lover, I don't fucking know, but if you're like a diehard Barbie fan and you're like, finally a Barbie collection, which I'm calling bullshit on because I feel like there have been other Barbie collections in the world, but whatever. I don't know. This is like a hard pass for me. I've personally never been excited about Pure Cosmetics and I've never known anybody else to be really down for Pure Cosmetics either. Like swearing by the quality, swearing by the value. It just kind of seems like a high-end brand that's in the same kind of realm as all the other high-end brands. Like it's not exciting. They make kind of mundane makeup. So not for me. Lala Voss is coming out with two more smaller eyeshadow palettes. It is a Coral Crush palette, just hard pass right off the bat. And I really want to talk about the Vibes palette, I believe is what the kind of like electric-y looking colorful one is. I'm so over Violet Voss and I feel like I've defended them a lot in the past because they used to have like really cool, amazing eyeshadow palettes, at least in my opinion. And then they kind of got like noticed by influencers and started kind of pushing out the warm tone 100 shade of brown palettes and they can't get away from eyeshadow they don't do anything but palettes it's almost like they realized that that was like the best thing for them to do but now it's like way too much and i'm so not into it they don't do anything with palettes i can't name one thing that they've done besides palettes and to me i've said this a thousand times all of their palettes are priced about $10 more than what I actually think they're worth because it's just mediocre, mass-produced, typical quality to me. It's not anything spectacular. And I think a lot of brands are just neck and neck with that. And you can get the same kind of shit for a lot cheaper. And again, I'm just so personally sick of rainbow palettes. I feel like rainbow palettes in itself are almost lazy because you're not bothering to put together an interesting, colorful color story something that like inspires people or like gives them a place to start maybe if you're not familiar with color it's kind of like here you go have at it you wanted color have fun and it just kind of was almost lazy at this point and it's like the new neutral rainbow is the new neutral palette rainbow is the new red smoky eye because every brand is doing it just to appease like the five percent of us that were like more color and i don't like any of it none of it's interesting jumping away from eyeshadows for a second i realize this is a very eyeshadow heavy video but it's the bulk of what i care about and it's the bulk of what i feel like is released to the masses so the soul body glow oils slow body slow slow body soul body is like a sister company to ColourPop. I see like so many people freaking out about these body oils, not just of like Soul, but like a lot of other companies as well. If you are not a shimmery body oil person, don't act like buying this is going to make you a shimmery body oil person. You know what I mean? Like if you don't have a need for this, if you're not like planning to go sit on a beach with like sparkly limbs and a bikini top and take Instagram photos. Like if that's not your life and you don't have a need for that anytime soon, don't buy this thinking you're going to find a need for this product because I don't have a need for this product. Also, 
it's August. It's mid-August at that. And really, like, the month's gonna be over in, like, two weeks. I'm kind of shocked that they're releasing more of these shades so close to fall because I feel like all of us are, like, getting our lives together, going back to school, getting off of vacation, like, getting ready to take out the ACs. Like, beach time is leaving. Also, don't fall into the trap of it's affordable, so I want it. Or it's affordable, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna have less guilt if I buy it. Because all ColourPop's brands and like sister brands are all relatively affordable, which I'll get at later when I roast ColourPop. It's just like I can't even say enough. Like, don't let influencers who love these products trick you into believing that you have a need for these. Because if you really just want a sparkly shoulder, like hit a brush with some highlighter with some setting spray and you're good to go. You don't need to buy a whole bottle of crap. So this was something that was asked of me to anti-haul. I did ask you guys what you needed to be talked out of. And this was something that a couple of you guys said. The Melt Makeup Undertone Nudes lipsticks that are coming out. Which this is almost like, really? This was like one of those releases? Because I'm just like not used to liquid lipsticks being a big deal right now. Like even me, I'm normally a liquid lipstick loving like bitch but I'm so into glosses right now because it's the summer and glosses are easy and it's fun and blah blah blah. So I was a little shocked that they were coming out with liquid lipsticks and it's also they seem to be very fall colors which is fine it's kind of the end of the summer anyway like I said but this is an instance where you need to not let the coolness of the brand trick you into believing that you need this. I feel like Melt Cosmetics is very much the new Kat Von D in that it's like the cool girl brand and they come out with like the edgy products and they smoke weed oh my god how edgy and they're in Sephora now and I can fully see them being like the new heads of the table and just like out shadowing anything Kat Von D does now I really can I feel like they have filled that niche 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 but I can promise you if you're a grungy makeup lover you probably already have liquid lipsticks very similar to these colors or very very close. They're like $20 lipsticks. Don't rush out to buy a $20 lipstick just because it's a cool brand or a cool thing or oh my god it appeals to my aesthetic. Like if you're really like this is the gray lipstick that I've been missing in my life. Like yeah go to Sephora and swatch it. But I know for me I have so many lipsticks. I have enough lipsticks that you're gonna have to bury me in a tomb with all of my makeup and all of my lipsticks like a pharaoh one day. I can I can probably dupe these out. And I know that like part of my soul is tempted to go and swatch these and like maybe get them on the Sephora sale. But it's it's like a hundred dollars for the lipsticks. I don't need them. And you know they want you to buy them all because they have them in that little cute set. So they're hoping that you'll have that completionist attitude where you need them all. You can't just grab one. Uh, toxic. Other things that you should not buy just because you like or stand the brands. The new Anastasia Beverly Hills and Fenty Beauty Luminous Foundations. I got so many people telling me that I need to talk them out of this. Like the lipsticks. If you're in dire need of a dewy luminous skin foundation to fill a void that you have in your life and in your heart and in your makeup collection because you just haven't found the perfect one for you yet go go to the store get a sample try it swatch it find your shade cool but if you're like me and you have a whole drawer of foundations you never reach for and there's really only two in your collection that you truly love with all your heart and that work for you and your skin needs don't just run to the store or order these because they're new and they're interesting and you really like the brands because that's a trap that I find myself falling into. When I really like a brand and I really believe in like their quality and like if they're relatively unproblematic and things like that, I kind of fall into that loop of like I need to get all of their releases and like collect them and like because it's such good quality and it's so amazing. I don't have a need for these foundations right now. Would I love to try them? Probably yeah eventually but like I'm good. I'm gonna be okay if I don't buy them. They're so expensive. They're like $40 foundations. That's a lot. And I feel like foundations can be a risky purchase if whether you go in store and find your shade or not because your skin tone changes with like you know the seasons and stuff and also like how they perform with your primers and your skincare and your specific skin needs in itself. So then you buy it and then you're stuck with it if you don't like it and you could return to the store obviously but if you're not in a situation where you could do that then it kind of just sits in your collection and you wear it what when like you have to go to Target and you don't want anyone to see you in your good makeup. And it's not like something you can easily pass on to other people because everyone's skin concerns are so unique. I don't know. Like, it's such an expensive thing that you just don't need. 
and you don't need it just because like the cool brands or like the good brands are releasing it. You know what I mean? Like these products already exist in the world. You probably already have it. Speaking of Anastasia though, it was highly requested of me to talk about the new Jackie Aina palette that's coming out in collaboration with ABH. I'm going to talk about this very briefly because I feel like Jackie Aina is a little bit controversial. So I'm going to kind of remove myself from Jackie Aina as a person and just talk about the product in itself. I've seen so many people buy this palette and put it with all of their other ABH palettes and all of them just look like one step different than the others if that makes sense. If you are somebody with a darker skin tone that really is craving the colors that Jackie has thoughtfully put into this palette because like those don't exist for you in an ABH formula yet. Like that makes sense. But if you're someone like me, again, I'm targeting myself here, who just loves to collect the ABH palettes because they're wonderful quality and they're amazing and beautiful, like take a step back and just check yourself because this is so similar to the other things that they've made in the last couple years. It's so similar. Also, if you're someone who really does love Jack Anna, don't buy this just because you love Jack Anna. Like don't buy influencer things just because you love the influencer. They're going to be okay. Like I said in my disclaimer, these brands are all gonna be okay if you don't buy from them and these influencers are all gonna be okay if you don't buy their shit. Like, it's fine. You can support them from afar. I think back in the day, Makeup Struggles did a video that was like, brands she supports from afar. It was like stuff that she isn't buying but she still roots for the brand. Like, that's okay to do. You can still be excited about a brand without purchasing from a brand. You can still be excited about a product or release without purchasing that release. Does that make sense? Like, if you find yourself with that uncontrolled urge of like, I gotta buy it, my credit card's in my hand, take a deep breath. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> I wanted to throw a quick editor's note about the new Norvina Pro Volume 1 palette that was teased as I'm editing this. I find this palette so ugly, first of all. The bottom two rows just kill it for me. I would have loved it if it didn't have those two bottom rows. I think it makes it look so childish. And second of all, if I was Jackie Ina, I would be pissed that something was coming out this soon after my collab with a major brand because, like, way to ride those coattails. And, like, third of all, it's not like ABH to keep pulling a color pop and keep like releasing so much crap so close together. I don't know if they felt like they had to because their shit keeps getting leaked accidentally or if they're doing that on purpose. I don't know. But this is genuinely the first ABH palette that I have absolutely no interest in, that I don't want to go and collect, that is not tempting me in the slightest. It's just ugly and doesn't make sense even as a pro palette because of the mix of the matte and shimmers together that don't seem to make sense for a working artist. It almost seems like a gimmick of profiting off of like pro makeup for average makeup users. I don't know. Everything about it is weird. The timing is weird. The color arrangement's weird. I don't understand the brand collaborating or like collaborating with itself by collabing with Norvina. It's just everything about it I don't like and doesn't seem typical of ABH. I don't like it. It's a pass for me. You don't need it either. And calling it volume one is implying that there will be a volume two and so on out. So they're gonna hope that you have that completionist mindset too, so don't fall for it. Because we're gonna talk about influencer shit though, I have to talk about the Jeffree Star and Morphe collab because what the actual goddamn fuck is this? Morphe has continuously proven time and time again what a ridiculous company they are. Between like the almost monopoly that they have over influencers and the kinds of content that influencers make and just how absolutely insane the brainwashing has been that their stuff is good quality because influencers are getting paid out by this company like it's so messed up and I feel like I'm someone who's kind of excused that on my channel because sometimes they do come out with cool shit but when you really think about it it's so awful like Morphe is so awful and then Jeffree Star whether you love him or hate him, controversial figure. Let's just put it that way for the sake of my comment section. What doesn't fucking make sense about this collection and why I'm so personally mad about it and why it just screams cash grab to me, besides all of the other Morphe reasons that it screams cash grab, is that Jeffree Star in his video, from what I understand, explaining the collection, is like, oh, this is a product that I can give at a lower price point that I would have been able to do with my own brand. And that, to me, is like so many red flags. That is so messed up to me and just screams, I want your money, cash grab, bullshit. Yes, it is so honorable that Jeffree Star's code goes to charity. 
he has bajillions of dollars and doesn't need a Morphe code. That doesn't mean he didn't make money off of this collab. Believe you me, he made a lot of money off of this. And I feel like the fact that he's admitting that he can only provide whatever this is because it's a really big, bulky, like repetitive, lots of similar shadows, typical esque Morphe palette. So anti Hollett for all of those reasons. But the fact that he's admitting that he can't like give this to you in his own brand is so mind boggling to me. And I'm not gonna get off this subject for a second because you would think he could just maybe make a more condensed like nine pan like he did with the Jawbreaker thing pink and yellow palette and sell it at a lower price point and be able to provide something a little bit more affordable to people who really want to support Jeffree Star, right? It's almost like he's saying, because his quality is shitty, I can give that to you if I just put my name on it. Like it just doesn't sit well with me. I don't know. There's something about it that's really icky and like chilling and like sellouty almost to me. It's almost like Morphe and Jeffree Star are completely capitalizing off of how loved he is and how his stands are so ruthless and will buy and defend anything he does. I don't like it. It's a no from me. Um, something else infuriating that I have to talk about is the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette that got teased like a day ago. What the hell is this? Urban Decay must think that they're fucking the game up. Like I'm convinced they must think that they're so on trend and so revolutionary and their shit is so cool. Like has anyone told them that that's not true? Has anyone told them like how laughable they've become. So somewhere in the world, right? Urban Decay had a creative team that kind of figured out that yellows were gonna be the next big thing. And they were like, oh, what if we created a naked palette with, get this, a shimmery brownish yellow, <laughs> count my millions of dollars. Like, why would you ever buy this when you could just buy any of the other yellowish tone palettes that are coming out that are more affordable and more yellow. And like, I just feel like this exists already. It kind of looks like the Juvia's Place Warrior palette. And like, who still cares about the naked palettes? Who? I don't, I really don't. I don't still care about them anymore. There was a time where I was holding on and I was still buying all of them. And that time has passed because they're just not that great. All of your looks relatively turn out, turn out the same. And they're really expensive. They're like upwards of like almost $60. These are like yellowish tone browns. They exist someplace else. If like this is your jam, you love yellowish tone browns, I guarantee you, you can find this probably in like a Milani palette from the drugstore, which is like similar quality at the, like at the same time. Urban Decay's quality isn't even worth their price tag to me anymore. A lot of these high-end brands are in like Ult and Sephora, like the classic OG brands. I don't think their quality lives up to their prices anymore because so much more stuff has come out at such a better value with like different textures and interesting color arrangements and like new formulas that I just feel like things, brands like Urban Decay are getting left behind. And this is so boring and lame and not cool and just not needed. And don't think because you have all the other naked palettes that you need this naked palette because it kind of looks like the first naked palette a little bit or somewhere in between like the first and second one. So. Don't be a completionist, and I'm talking at myself that one. <laughs> the ColourPop Rainbow Collection. This actually really pisses me off because this is such a scam. This is such a scam because they are acting like these are all new products, but they've pulled a benefit on you because these are not all new products. These are like repackaged, rearranged little sets of pre-existing ColourPop products. And then the eyeshadows themselves, because they released the palette with the eyeshadows, there are only seven new shades. But they're making you think that this is new and it's a new collection and it's like, but it's like if you didn't already buy these from ColourPop, you didn't already have a need for these products, the lip products, the shadows, the blah, you don't need it again just because you can see it arranged in a rainbow. That's not a thing that you need. I'm really over like the constant consumerism that ColourPop promotes. I'm really over the fact that like we allow them to release a product a week or a new line every week because we did this. We buy everything that they release and it just like allows them to keep doing this and it's so fucking shitty. Cause at this point now they're just being lazy and a little bit manipulative and just like realizing that we'll buy whatever it is that they put together and it's such crap. It really is like such a benefit box blush palette mood. And again, like Soul Beauty, just because ColourPop is affordable doesn't mean you need to like 
keep buying these collections they come out with or like stay on top of all their releases because one that's exhausting and two it adds up at the end of the day because you're like oh I only have to spend thirty dollars to get free shipping or oh that's just another lipstick but they all kind of jack their prices up over a dollar over the years which is fine but then all of a sudden an eyeshadow costs eight dollars instead of five eyeshadow blah 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 like you know what I mean like you don't need to be a ColourPop stan. I have that problem where I kind of want to be a ColourPop stan. And at my old job, I used to have this joke that there was like a ColourPop order in the world for me at any given moment. Because for a while that was true. Because I feel like they do release a lot of really cool, innovative stuff. But the fact that they've literally repackaged old crap and presented it as new is such a cash grab and so fucking lame. And I'm so not about it. What would an anti-haul be if I wasn't roasting the shit out of Too Faced? Because what are they even doing at this point? What are they doing? I have not been excited for a Too Faced release in a very long time. The Too Faced Palm Springs palette, like there's not even a green in it. I don't know if that's just me. I think of palms, Palm Springs, I think of green. I get they're going for the place, whatever. But I like, I thought we were past this. I thought we were past the pop of blue. In fact, I did a whole video talking about all of the palettes in my collection with pops of blue. There are a lot. Oh my god side note i have an ipad holder for the podcast now and it was right next to me and i went and turned and i thought it was a person and i almost shit my pants because the building may or may not be haunted that's a whole thing but like a pop of blue Too Faced really and at Too Faced prices and again like urban decay they're one of those brands where back in the day you were like this is amazing makeup cannot get better than this but then their quality just isn't that anymore and they're so expensive for no reason not to mention the Too Faced gingerbread extra spicy palette in what universe is this extra spicy this is like white american mayo is spicy extra spicy -ness. like you know like and what universe? like how is this spicier than the original palette there's like one are you kidding me also it's august Too Faced, and you're gonna push christmas stuff in august how dare you halloween hasn't even risen from its grave yet and you're gonna push christmas stuff at me how dare you moving on from Too Faced, <laughs> the lunar beauty strawberry dreams collection again boring ass lipsticks that we already have the thing about this collection that i think most people are excited about is the eyeshadow palette because the outside packaging is absolutely stunning beautiful a plus the inside though, I'm not going to lie, when I first saw it, I thought it was a BH Cosmetics palette because to me the inside looks exactly how the festival palette looks. This is one of those situations where you need to not let the arrangement of the colors trick you into believing that they're new or interesting colors because it's reds and blues, like we have them already. Also, I know I've touched on this earlier, but I'm just so over influencer products and collabs and brands. I feel like just we have enabled the beauty community to be in such a toxic, awful consumerist place because we have let every influencer know that no matter what they push to us, no matter what they create, we're gonna fucking buy it because we love you. And it's just such crap. Like I cannot believe Manny has a brand. I can't believe so many of these influencers have brands and they're kind of just pushing out mediocre crap at an extremely high price tag. And I'm just like, I cannot believe we allowed them to do this. I cannot believe that like we have let them get away knowing that they have a built-in consumer base for anything they even touch like that stan culture that mentality directly led to jacqueline hill's moldy toxic spiky lipsticks like us forgiving her time and time again and saying like it doesn't matter that all of your other collabs were shit will still buy anything you put out even though you've proven yourself to be untrustworthy has led to the laziness and the like not giving a shit that creating toxic lipsticks must have like you must must have had you know what I mean like you have to be in a real I don't give a fuck these these bitches will buy anything place to do what she did and I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent for a second because like I'm just over Lunar Beauty I'm over the influencer crap it's so boring to me and it's so like I really kind of like wished we were moving past this but apparently we're not so I gotta anti-haul it like this is the first Manny release where there is a hint of like intrigue in me but then like just catching my breath and like thinking about it absolutely not i'm not buying it i'm not supporting these influencer brands anymore i'm not doing it which leads me to the biggest like influencer cash grab does not care about quality does not care about anything but your money release in this anti-haul the kylie cosmetics birthday collection this is the epitome 
of buying shit for the sake of the name that's on it. I get so mad when I think about Kylie Cosmetics. First, they have, Kylie Cosmetics has proven that it's like awful, inconsistent, just basic at best quality. And there's still the suspicion that it's repackaged ColourPop. I kind of am in that boat of like, you should just buy ColourPop because it's way more affordable. And it's the same things. Like she's releasing some pressed eyeshadows, some lipsticks, some jelly shadows. Buy the jelly much eyeshadow, they're like $6. But the biggest thing that pisses me off about this Kylie Cosmetics shit is that the whole line, the palette, the highlighter, whatever, is coated in money signs? What a bigger fuck you to like the rest of us. It's almost like she's like laughing at like, ha ha ha, look at how rich I am and we celebrate me on my birthday and I could shit in a bag and you peasants would buy it anyway. Like it's so disgusting. It's so like consumerist 1% awful bullshit and I'm over it. And I don't even know who buys Kylie Cosmetics at this point because like in my real life, people who are not attached to this YouTube gig or I'm not like as into this stuff, like they still know the brands that are like doing shit. Like they know who Jeffree Star is. They buy his shit. They buy it from Tarte and Too Faced, blah, blah, blah. Nobody I know in my real life buys Kylie Cosmetics. I get a lot of like my friends ask me like, oh, have you ever tried Glossier? Or my friends ask me, have you ever tried Milk? Nobody gives a shit about Kylie Cosmetics. Who is buying her shit? Little like teenage girls? What? I, it's just, it's gross. It's a cash grab and it's gross and you're just buying it for her name and I hate it. And that's the last thing we're going to be anti-haul in this video because it makes me so mad and I hate it. And with that, <laughs> composing myself, I'm very hungry. I need to turn my air conditioner back on. I need to figure out what Emily's doing. Um, that was my anti-haul. <laughs> I don't do these very often because people seem to be very upset. Like most people I think take anti-hauls in the spirit that they're supposed to be taken. But some people just don't. And I've even gotten comments that are like, I don't understand how anti-hauls got like this where we're just shitting on makeup. They never were like this. Go watch Kimberly Clark's like original anti-hauls because they absolutely have always been like this. They absolutely have always been about shit talking makeup because that's how ridiculous it is. Like if you feel such an emotional attachment to makeup that you can't handle when we shit talk it, that's problematic and the makeup companies have won. I'm just gonna keep saying it. Anyway, <laughs> if you like this video, if you like anti-hauls, and if you like me, please hit like and subscribe. Talk to me about what you are anti-hauling in the comments below or what you feel about the things that I'm anti-hauling down below. Just so you know, you can also follow me on my Instagram, which is also Spooklips and Fat Hips, to see what I'm doing. And I'm not on YouTube. I apologize that I went two weeks in between uploads. I'm really trying to get better at that. I'm really trying to do at least the video a week, probably more. Matt went back to work and I have like a new schedule for myself that I'm trying to abide by, hence why I'm filming in the daytime for once. So I'm really gonna try to get better. Bear with me, I know I always say that, but like I actually am implementing steps to achieve a change this time. Crossing my fingers. But anyway, that's that's all I have to say. That's all I got. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I forgot my outro, and I will see you all in the next one. <laughs> Bye guys!